Hello, so we are back and you are in the API driven business session and we will start this uh, this track with uh, the future of collaboration in corporate banking and uh, that will be delivered by Younes El Aduti who is doing API strategy and ecosystems at Commerce, Commerce Bank uh, AG. Hello Younes, how are you? Hey, thanks for the introduction. I'm fine. I'm looking forward to this. Looking forward to on our side. So I invite you to uh, share your slide with us and the stage Great. is yours uh, for 20 minutes. Uh, then we'll address questions with you. Perfect. Enjoy. So um, thanks for the short introduction. But before introducing uh, myself, uh, let's do something different for a minute. Because I'm one of 80 speakers in this event and even more important than the question of who I am is the question of what defines the company I am from. Uh, you see it in the back. Uh, only when you understand this company itself, then you can understand what our vision uh, is and how it was conceived. So for this experiment, let's jump back in time and do 150 years back in one jump. And now it is the year 1870. The world is actually as colorful as it's today, but it's only recorded in black and white. And in this year, the Commerce Bank was founded. And because we homo sapiens aren't as good uh, in processing time as we think we are, let's uh, put it into perspective. 1870 is the same year Jules Verne published the book Around the World in 80 Days. In this, the main character bets that he can travel around the world in, as the title says, 80 days. So with this in mind, Let's go back into the present, into the year 2021. And in the 19 minutes since this conference has started today, the ISS has circled the Earth once already. So the world has changed this much in 150 years. You don't need 80 days, you need 90 minutes to go around the planet. So today we are talking about a company that has lived through such radical changes in the world. And during this time, the Commerce Bank has achieved a lot. Um, we are Germany's second largest bank and the leading partner for German companies. We have a customer base of over 11 million customers and hundreds of branches in Germany. But just like any other bank, Commerzbank has had to realize that the market environment has changed. We are no longer moving in horse ring carriages, but have changed to spaceships instead. So, Hello everyone, as uh, I was introduced, my name is Yunus Aladuti and I'm a business expert at the Commerce Bank. My colleagues and I worked on a white paper that we published last year and I have embedded the link at the end of the presentation. It's definitely worth a read. But today I will uh, introduce to you to a few interesting insights that we found. So let's just jump into it. As I just said, the banking industry is in a radically different situation than it was 15 years ago. Established banks not only have to struggle with external factors, but often also with internal problems, with old infrastructures or working methods that are way too rigged by now. And all of these companies suddenly, uh, suddenly realize that their lavish spending from way back, which was the norm, now they need to reduce that. They need to reduce costs effectively and at the same time somehow increase their revenue. This is a very interesting problem. We will get back to this later with a solution. Um, those needs are valid for the entire industry and also for the Commerce Bank. So let me tell you, this is no easy undertaking that we're doing. But uh, how have people uh, in our bank have put it so beautifully? Pressure and heat creates diamonds. So how do we want to do that? Um, first, we did the introspective. We looked out ourselves at our uh, culture and our work dynamic. We want to become faster and more dynamic to adapt quickly to the different situations. So we trained a massive part of the Commerce Bank to beca become more agile. In each cluster, as we call them, we started to bring people with solution-oriented personalities together. These are developers, uh, operations, and business experts who work together in cross-functional teams. And um, in these teams, in two weeks iterations, they create concepts, develop them and produce them. So where we had to struggle a struggle with uh, rigid and old working methods before, this has enabled us significantly in our flexibility that otherwise only exists in smaller companies. So after we went through this introspective at Commerzbank and better positioned ourselves there, we went into the next phase and started to think about our customers, the thing you should do. But what do the customers actually want? 
I often hear something like, the needs of our customers are changing. And I can say very, very clearly, this is not true. The needs of our customers have long since completely changed. The industry has to realize that they didn't have a grasp on customer centricity for a long time. And at the end of this is a major key, uh, major key lesson. Customers have a choice, no more so than ever. Like you, especially when you go into the grocery store, a store, you already know for sure what you need. And if supplier A is unable to provide the service that you're looking for, you just go to supplier B. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, and this would be no surprise to anyone, we live in a post-Apple iPhone world. Um, user experience has become very, uh, very crucial, critical, but this is uh, uh, very intuitive. I, I will go just to the third point. That is, this is not as intuitive a subject. And it is the concept of data sovereignty. We all want to make our customers rulers of their own data. At the same time, we would like to use that data for different use cases. So how do we manage this balancing act between these two things? The customer has a need for security and control. In the first step, you have to solve this basic need and offer him a solution or her a solution through which uh, they benefit from their own usage or uh, data usage. And now you communicate this benefit and then the customer will be very secure in his handling or in your handling of his data and will participate. And this is exactly where fintechs excel at. Uh, they offer very innovative and uh, improved solutions for customers. It's clear to everyone that established banks can hardly keep up with such a speed at which uh, a small startup can develop. Um, our IT and corporate infrastructure is large and despite all of the agility that we tried for and improved on, generally sluggish. A lot of mass moves slowly. Newton's law of inertia already says something similar. But that doesn't have to be a disadvantage to us. Instead of trying to fight fintechs, we'd like to work with them or at least use their insights and uh, develop accordingly to that. So we want to become, and we trying to become a company that is not close to change, but rather specifically adapt and reinvent itself. So how, how, how did this process look like? Uh, it became clear to us that we had to develop in order to remain relevant as a bank. A first step in this direction was to make open banking possible through secure APIs. Right now, you can see only the left side, and here you see the state of our bank around five years ago. At the bottom left here, we have the classic banking approach. We provide our customers with our core banking products, but the problem is the same customer also has is, or is consumer in, of another company because it's necessary for, for his business. And we see that in the top left, what is all, all gray. We were unable to combine these different products sensibly with our banking business, so synergies and efficiencies were lost. And if we now ja jump into what we are seeing as our target image, and I have to be clear, we are not done with the development. This is a very long process, but we are working on it consistently. Um, here in the future, we want to connect directly to the digital ecosystems that the, connect uh, that the customer wants to use. Uh, this is how customer a customer will benefit from services of third-party providers and ours. This creates added value that was previously not possible. Let's put it in practice. How would it look like? A customer that would use the bank of the future would apply for financing for one of the new production machines from Commerzbank, and uh, then they can already book a transport insurance or even installation service over the platform and the ecosystem. So first you have to take the step to near banking, what we did in the left, what we improved on in the right, then go to near banking products and then pass that to beyond banking. And this is a change that's very important, very central to, to all of this transformation. All companies will have to go through this. It doesn't matter if it's company a company uh, that's banking or non-banking. This is what customers want. If supplier A cannot um, provide this, then supplier B will. So if someone has to anticipate needs and has uh, to uh, fulfill all of those needs, wh what approach do we have to do as a company to get to that stage? We have broken that down into four 
core components that we have seen in the praxis uh, that many companies struggle with. The first two are data and infrastructure. They go hand in hand. Um, we go into way more detail in the white paper. Uh, today I will not, but it is clear to all of us that we need a high performance infrastructure so that data can be transmitted quickly and securely within the ecosystem. This must take place across organizational boundaries and um, therefore takes uh, take place in standard, standardized manner. So um, I, I will leave this aside. The third component, the culture, I already talked about this. Uh, here I gave the introspective of what we did. What's important is that this cultural change does not stop at the organization's border. It also applies to the needed collaborations partner. So we come to the fourth component and the most important part in this presentation today. As we've seen on the last slide, when we saw the, the, the right side and what was above, you have to look for partners that can cover business parts where you don't have proficiency. What's important to realize is that the new market we're in is no longer a zero-sum game. Like instead of uh, fighting against each other, we should focus on creating added value together that cannot be given by one individual party. So here you have to ask yourself, where can we develop innov innovative products for mutual customers? In this new market environment, the company that offers the most added value for the majority of participants is doing best. And let me be a bit daring. If you take away one single sentence from this presentation, then it should be this one. The company with the best ecosystem strategy will conquer the 2020s. And for that, we have to work with all parties, be it other banks or fintechs, non-banking companies, or even our own customers. Everyone must be brought to this table to be, for this to be a successful endeavor. So. The goal is to create an ecosystem with suitable partners that bring more benefits to the customer overall than if they approach each partner individually. If the requirement is that I've been talking about to be able to do everything and to have to meet all customer needs, how reality provides um, a truth that nobody can do everything alone. Here we're looking at a, discrep a discrepancy which we have to address, to be honest. So the solution in this speaking part of mine is to create ecosystems through collaborations. So let's jump into the theory for a minute as the insights until now were mostly gathered in the practice. So there, are, in theory, there are three roles that you uh, must have probably heard already. There is the orchestrator, there is the aggregator and the provider. And the theory says that you have to take on one of the three roles in order to participate in an ecosystem. An orchestrator connects the various parties and thus forms the basic framework for an ecosystem. The aggregator aggregates a selection of different services and creates transparency, simplifies the process along the value chain. And the product provider is the one who provides the customer uh, with a product or data, regardless of whether it's a company or a private customer. While the theory strictly separates these, reality looks actually a bit different. No company is just one of these roles or even should want to be that. The role should be chosen differently depending on the business area, your own strengths and the circumstances. If the company is, has a market power in a business area, naturally a different strategy should be used than if you're just one of many. So the choice should be uh, derived for individually or even arise organically. And I'm a fan of real-world examples, so let's apply what we've learned into uh, the reality or applied reality. Uh, I brought along an example of an ecosystem that should make sense to an international audience as you are. What we are seeing here is an ecosystem for homeowners. Like any realistic establishment of an ecosystem, however, you cannot simply create a target picture on the first day and then develop the entire product at once. Instead, you have to think in agile manners in terms of iterations, MVPs, you have to think fail fast. So we first ask ourselves, what are the customer needs? Uh, our customer, that's you know, you want to move into a, new, into a new home. You don't want to worry, worry about financing. You don't want to worry about uh, which insurance you need. And uh, best of all, not of uh, the trades, trades people that you have to employ. You just simply want a new home. And all of these things are annoying factors that separate you from what you want. 
any economist would tell you that's where you position yourself as a company. So we'll take this hypothesis thesis and try to uh, test them one by one. So as I said earlier, as a bank, we should always start to offer core banking services as we know them best. This applies actually to all industries and their core businesses. We have to streamline all of these products into one process and one place and try to learn from the customer for the next step, which is when we try the expansion into near banking services. What needs could that be? For example, insurance, that's something that a customer would easily leave of a bank. And this can be easily obtained from partners via APIs and then offered to our customers directly via our existing interface. So far, we have done nothing than connect one API and one third party provider. And we have already uh, made our customers happier because we are helping him additionally. Now I uh, do this with other things. And then I ask myself the question, why shouldn't I offer this complete solution to other companies as well? So I built a platform that does just exactly that. And uh, instead of just supplying my, my front end, the platform will supply these core products and near banking products to the interface, uh, to the um, front end of another company. And then the same company can offer their customer benefits, which I profit from. So as soon as I can do that, I go the next step and add beyond banking services step by step. And suddenly I'm reevaluating my business and I realize that I have not only become an orchestrator, but also an orchestrator of a beyond banking ecosystem that meets all of the customers needs of a homeowner because I was learning each step and reevaluating my plan, my plans. And all of this started with me connecting one API and one uh, partner. So this is how it should look like. So what would be concrete steps that a company should focus on? First of all, you have to take care of the processes within your company in order to be successful. Clean up your own home first. So uh, we have done that uh, for once with the culture, yes, but we also have established an API first strategy within our company like years ago. Each new interface must first be checked for API suitability, always. And we have come a long way from the company we were, but we compare ourselves to companies like Google. So we have much to improve until every product is available via API. But that is exactly what our aspiration has to be in order to be an effective particip participant in ecosystems. Once technically a large part of infrastructure, uh, infrastructure has already been standardized, then the step to ecosystems is a small one. From then on, it's just the task of the different company areas to, which is the second part, to identify new businesses, opportunities, and um, together with other partners, see what's viable and what's not. And this is exactly why we have planned our close, uh, very close cooperation program with other companies. We have initiated a partner program that promotes close corporations. And together, we can then share knowledge across organizational boundaries and the next step used and identified opportunities together. So we not only build the table, but also look for the best participants to sit down with us at the table, a very integral part. And also the third part, the shared know-how and resources, we have to share these insights with us because this is a very early developing market. And this is what I'm doing right now. I'm challenging my ideas. So I'm looking forward to your questions soon. Um, so if we go back to the first idea, we have shown the basic components a company needs to address. We have talked about the roles with which to participate in an ecosystem. And we have addressed that ecosystems uh, participation is profitable for everyone involved. We have left the times of a zero sum market. To meet the new customer needs, we as a company have to make innovations parts of our daily business. For that, we have to build a suitable infrastructure and focus our culture within and, out, and outside the company. And like this, we can address the problem as I start, as said in the, I told you in the beginning. Um, banks need to increase efficiency, save costs. And now like this, because we don't have to build everything ourselves, we can save those costs and, uh, costs and uh, at the same time increase our sales because we can offer services that we would otherwise not have. So, 
And then with this, all of a sudden, you turned an initial problem into a profitable solution and perhaps again enabled 150 years more corporate success if you actually want that. So perhaps next time in 150 years, uh, we will not only be able to orbit around the world in 90 minutes, but maybe around the entire solar system. Okay, one last thing from my side. On the left side, you see uh, a QR code for our developer portal with our external API catalog. So you can look at that. You also find there our promised white paper. Uh, it's definitely worth a read. And if you're interested in our partner program and or just want to talk with us and share knowledge, uh, then you're also welcome to do that. On the right side, there's my LinkedIn profile. Uh, just scan that if you want to. It's uh, very interesting to see how uh, much um, paper with business cards we are actually saving these days. So that's from my side. I'm looking forward to your questions. Thank you very much, Ines. Uh, thank you for uh, this presentation. We have a first question about the term open. Does the term open banking has scared um, executives about opening APIs? Um, can you repeat the first part? What has scared? Does, 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 does the, the term open, open banking, banking scare executives? Has scared executives into like adopting APIs? You know, the fact that probably- uh, the, Okay, I get it. Yeah. Um, very good question, to be honest. So every company has different generations, different cultures, different approaches to things. And every time when it's about new things, uh, be it technological or trend-wise, yes, there are always those that uh, are like, okay, we don't do that until we think, oh, it's too late. Now we have to do that. Um, I think I never did analysis on the executive line, but in my belief it's more of a, the guidelines pushed us into that. And now we're realizing we don't only have to do it because we have to need to, but we can also use this opportunity to take a winning from this. So maybe yes, in the first, in the beginning, but by now it's very culturally lived or uh, that's what I hope to be honest. To your mind, when business will be the main driver for opening APIs? In banks? Um, maybe we, uh, if it's only APIs, then we are seeing in Europe the first steps of monetization in APIs. So if we're not talking about ecosystems, we're just talking about APIs. Uh, it's actually happening right now. Right now is a time where companies have to position themselves early and learn iteratively what an API costs and uh, where the profit is. And then you have very interesting questions because normally you have a product that is worth something. Now you have data that depends on the use case. So this data doesn't have worth until someone uses it for a specific thing. And then you have the case in monetization of APIs that you don't ask yourself what's the data worth, but what's the use case worth? And you have to adapt that. So very interesting times. I think we have to change the approach and not think of by the product, but by the use of the product. Yeah, at APLS conferences, some speakers used to say that we're we were product versus platform, uh, product versus pl product. We're going platform versus platform, and we will be soon in ecosystem versus ecosystem. And API is enabled to do this transition from pro yeah. product to platform to to ecosystem. So maybe maybe the the next question. So for you, what how would you advise other companies, banks maybe, but about building an ecosystem of application and entrepreneurs around your open programs? To be honest, um, if I was, you have to be pragmatic about these things. It's uh, even in big companies, it's very hard to uh, invest with big quantities and big resources in new things. So maybe take the small approach, small steps, build your APIs first so you're prepared, then you can monetize those first APIs, then you see uh, where is your company best suited to, uh, to position themselves, and then try one ecosystem in one specific branch of your company and try to grow from there. Don't, do not try to be orchestrated in everything because that's how you will fail. So be realistic about the approach. Yeah, thank you very much, Younes. Perfect on time. Thank yeah. you. That was great um, to have you, and we'll be glad to have to have you at uh, our other conference dedicated on banking. Uh, so uh, yeah, you will be our guest. 
I will look forward to that. Thank you. And thanks to the audience. Yeah, thank you, Younes. 